All right, I finished up all the shapes. Now I just need to organize them into the right places. And I can do that with my auto select layer and select the ones I want to move down behind the eye. And then I can use command left bracket to move those down. Sometimes you have to move them down quite a bit because we've created a lot of layers. So these are all my vector shapes. I've turned off my background. And the only change I made to the original was I moved the icicles a little bit to make more sense. Now that I have done that, I'm going to take my screen grabs and I'm going to delete those layers. So I'm left with only my vector shapes. And then I'm going to save that first as a PSD. You know, just keep saving my work with all my different layers. There's probably about 60, 60 or so different shape layers here. Notice they all have the little shape icon in the layer window, which means they are all vectors, which means that, let me zoom in right now, it's 8 by 10. You can see the pixels at 8 by 10. They're pretty small pixels, way better than the screen resolution of the emoji I originally used and super clean. But because they're vector shapes, I could change that at any time to something way bigger. Let's say instead of 30 inches wide, let's make it 40 inches wide. Still at 300 pixels per inch. It's going to be 400 megabytes instead of 25. And now when I zoom in, so this is half a gig big. It takes me a lot of zooming to get to the pixels. So this would be even cleaner and could be printed that much larger at 40 inches, which is the largest any printing press can print. 40 by 30 inches. But I'll undo that just because it undo that image size just because it takes up more memory than I need. And that's the advantage of this PSD file. This one PSD file with those vectors in it could be made any resolution. But it is not a vector file. It just has vectors embedded within it. So that's what's confusing about vector shapes. Photoshop does not allow you to save something as a vector. You can just use vector tools inside of it. So how do I want to put this up to Canvas? I'm going to say File, Save a Copy. And then I'm going to use a new file format, which is PNG. And that is to support the transparency. So it won't be filled in with a, a white rectangle behind it. It will just be a free floating emoji. I'm going to save it. Usually I would save it to the desktop because my desktop's so messy. I'm going to save it right to my exercise. as long as I know where to find it, right, I can go right to my desktop, look in my folder, and I see it. Here's my PSD. Let me make sure my PSD is saved in the right place. Yep, I want to update it. So this is my latest PSD. And again, I want to save a copy. And I want that copy to be a PNG. So you're saving it as a PSD and a PNG. So there's my PSD. And here is my PNG. If I open it up in preview, you'll see it has gray space around it. These are all shapes that I made. You see how the icicles fit the, the shape better than the screen grab. So that's, that's the basic shape copy that I can post to Canvas.
just click on the three little dots, I can edit it, and I can add. So this is the basic recreation. Now I can start adding some effects if I want. So I'm going to put the PNG in there. Now what effects might be helpful? Well, when I think of a cat's tongue, I think of texture. So I can add texture now to these vector shapes just using layer styles. I can put a shadow under the tongue. I can put a shadow around the edges of the bottom. I can give a reflective quality to the icicles. Lots of little things I could try out now that I have control of everything. So I'm going to do that within Photoshop pretty quick, quickly. I want to finish this by noon. And first, how do I add just a basic shadow? I'm going to work from the background on up. I double click on the layer, not the layer icon, that would give me the properties and the color, but the layer itself, and that will give me the layer styles. And I'm going to do what's called an inner shadow. Click on those options, play with them. I want to change the angle. There we go. I want to really soften it out. That's, that's a nice little shadow underneath. And I can make it noisy. <laughs> make it look like the cat has a five o'clock shadow. Or not. Noise is actually really helpful because the problem with vectors for some designers is that they look so digital, they don't have that hand done kind of feel. So adding some noise or some distortion, some grit can sometimes make things look more appealing. Okay, now with the tongue, I can use my layer style, click on the tongue layer, but remember I want to click on all the compound shapes that made it a layer. And then what I'm going to do, because I want to treat all of these the same with the layer style, I don't want to merge the layers because that would rasterize it, but instead I'm going to use this little folder icon that's next to the create a new layer. And what that will do is put them all into what's called a group. So if I turn the group off, it goes away. If I turn it on, they're all there. And then I can do a layer style to the group. So I double click on the group just like it, I double clicked on a layer. And now I can do something called texture. So I'll zoom in so you can see it. That's the texture. And then I can adjust it. By making it bigger, giving it more depth. Kind of interesting. I can add to that a drop shadow. So there's a shadow underneath the tongue. So basically you can play with these layer styles. Play with all the settings on them. Play with the angle of the light, the opacity, the color of the shadow. Make it a slightly orange shadow. It warms it up a little. I can play with the inner shadow. I've already done that, right? But instead of it being a black shadow, I can make it like a deeper pink. Then same thing for the nose. I can do the compound path. I can make a group of that compound path, and then I can layer style with a drop shadow the nose and give it a texture. Give it an inner glow. Let's play with that. It's like the opposite of an inner shadow. And I can give it a color as well. Endless opportunities. And then if I want to push the nose underneath, or I'm sorry, above the other shape, I just 
and do what I do. Then for this shape, this is like a line on the tongue. I'm going to give it a drop shadow and I'm going to give it texture. Here's the problem. I did it with just that line, but not the circle, right? So remember, I forgot that I had a circle there. So I've got to bring all that along into a group. So I'm going to move them together, move them underneath, and then put them into a group together so that I can stylize them together with the drop shadow and the texture. And maybe an inner shadow. No, nope, inner shadow is too much. I can change the lighting. That works pretty well. Okay, what about the icicles? Well, we're past noon, so I could keep working on this, and I probably will because it will be fun. But I'm going to put them in groups and then play with the stylizations. The drop shadows under the eyes, the inner shadow on the eyes. Let's give it kind of a bluish color. And you can really improve upon the emoji as you go. And then I'm just going to hit Command S and save my work. But all of these effects can be turned on and off and are all just tied to your vector shape layer. And at any time, you could play with the opacity of the effects as well. Like if I want my texture to be not quite so strong, just go for the overall opacity. Take it down. Make the tongue a little bit more subtle or less subtle. But remember, when you're doing the effects, you're doing it for the group if you have a compound shape. All right, so save your work. And for the icicles, if I wanted to do something kind of crazy with them, I'll just show you one at one other layer style. I can do the gradient overlay. And with the gradient overlay, I have a lot to choose from. This can vary with your version, <coughs> excuse me, of Photoshop. And I can also create my own gradients, but I'm gonna kind of create them in an interesting way and then play with their opacity and then play with their blending mode. So let's see, let's try overlay. So that looks a little bit more like ice. Let's try soft light. There we go. I can play with the angle. I want it more vertical, like shards of ice. And I can even move the, the gradient around. Make it a little bit more subtle. I like that. And then give them a drop 